Hello folks and welcome to uh, Linux for Seniors. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about Zorin, the XFCE desktop. And we're going to talk about appearance, not yours, the appearance of your system like icon sets and, um, and stuff like that. Um, so anyways, I'll point to that for a second here. What I'm talking about is not software. Misclicked there for a second. They both started with an S. I'm going to talk about appearance. So before I get going, I'm just going to make mention that um, I am using a virtual machine, but this should work in your install copy just the same. And uh, I'm going to take you on a brief tour uh, of my YouTube site if you're not familiar with uh, Linux for Seniors and give you some tips. So I have uh, a shortcut here that I made. It's a web-based icon in Zorn to my own YouTube site. So I started this uh, project up on the 9th of February. 2023 and I've already got uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 40 videos. So um, my intent is to make simple videos. Been around Linux for over 25 years and I thought I would share some of my uh, tips uh, with the folks out there. I may have some tips for you that uh, you may not have seen anywhere else because I have a, maybe some unique perspectives on things. Everybody has a different way of doing things. So um, this is really for everybody, but it's also good for the distributions that are out there, the Linux distributions. There are many. Linux is for any age. I'm going to highlight that. So it doesn't mean if you're not a senior, you can't watch these videos. Obviously, you're welcome to. My previous channel, Linux Tips by Thor, I've been asked that several times, is discontinued and closed. I'm not going to get into the details why, but I used to have over 450 videos there. I had my comments turned off on that particular one because it got ridiculous with the amount of abuse that people were trying to uh, squeeze by and uh, links that they were trying to post and language, salty language. So basically, I have top comments turned on on this right now. However, they are screened. And if you do put in salty language or malicious links, they will be deleted. If it gets bad enough, I will turn off comments. Let's hope it doesn't get to that. And if you're going to make derogatory comments, don't take this the wrong way, but uh, please go subscribe elsewhere and, uh, and uh, just move on. Now, let's go in a more positive direction. Uh, I do recommend that you watch my video on the largest screen possible for you. Since you're on mobile screens, if you are talking about uh, like uh, cell phones, uh, smartphones, they're pretty small in size. So I'm going to do this little trick here. This is Firefox web browser. So some of you folks know what I'm doing right now. Okay. So some of you seniors may appreciate this command for like this Firefox web browser. I believe it works in Chrome also. If you're not too sure what I'm doing here, I'm holding down my control key with my left hand and I'm going to release it now. And I'm using my computer scroll wheel, computer mouse scroll wheel to resize everything. It comes in handy. So keep that in mind. All right. Um, if you have a large smart TV, more likely you have the capability of installing the YouTube app there and you can watch my videos there. So whenever you're watching any of my videos, uh, just go to your smart TV's YouTube site and punch in Linux for seniors. That way you can watch my videos there also. And if you're trying to follow along, that may be fun. If you're on a laptop and let's say you've got this distribution installed like Zorin, it may be fun to see that on a bigger screen while having your laptop open and following along. All right, with that said, I'm going to move on. If your video is blurry, there's multiple reasons for that. Your internet connection is slow. You, my video just got uploaded and it's still... The YouTube servers are still replicating that across the world because this is worldwide. I had a nice comment from somebody in Africa just uh, the other day. And thank you for that, gentlemen. Very kind words. But more importantly, what happens is when I upload a video to a local YouTube server, more than likely a Linux server, it uh, takes my video, crunches it, and then uh, sends it off or replicates it to the world. Now, my videos are almost always filmed in 1080, if not 4K. Just wanted to let you know that. So it, what am I talking about the YouTube player gearbox? So let me give you a prime example of that. I'm going to go to the home screen, pause this loud guy. So this would be a typical video player for YouTube. 
So you hit the play button. There's a gearbox here. Scroll down. If you see 360, it's more likely in the grainiest um, setting there is. There's uh, some reasons why it switches to that sometimes. Maybe you're watching YouTube during prime time, as they call it. In other words, the busiest time of the day. You can manually check these by clicking on them. As in my case, this video was recorded in 4K, obviously, because I have a selection for it. Or I can drop the resolution down to something else. Your monitor may vary. In other words, it could be different. Just be aware of that little gearbox. Now I'm going to go to the About section. Let's talk about what I have for links. I have distrowatch.com if you're looking for other Linux distros or information. I have gnome-look.org, a nonprofit website to get these extra mouse pointers, even colorful ones. I have multiple videos already on this. And then some extra links here. If you're using a standard web browser, a standard web browser, you will have some links up here. There's only five. That's a limitation of YouTube. DistroWatch is one. That little foot goes to gnome-look.org where you can get extra mouse pointers and themes. If you are using a standard web browser, you will also have this magnifying glass. This is different from this magnifying glass. Your mobile apps, like on your smartphones, only have the search feature up here. In other words, searching all of YouTube. This one does something special. Just keep an eye on it. It will still be here, even if I go into playlists or even videos. It's still here. So while I'm in here, you can scroll if you like. I currently have around 40. That's not too bad for somebody who started this on the 9th of February. I believe that's about two weeks ago. Uh, but more importantly, what does this do? So I'm going to click it. All my videos and the videos will be keyword indexed in the future also. My previous YouTube site used to have the same feature. So I'm going to use the word mouse as my example, not the rodent, the computer mouse. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to try to find every video that I currently have in my library that has the word mouse in it. There's mouse pointers for MX. There's mouse pointers for Pop! OS. Something to do with Linux Mint that has the word mouse in it. Cinnamon. Custom mouse pointers. Here's a video for, um, for that. You get the idea? Okay. So you may want to check that periodically. I try to be inclusive of most distributions, but I can't squeeze everyone in there. So, and it takes time to make multiple videos of anything. Now, with that said, um, I'm going to click the community tab. If you have a smartphone, you could have some fun with this and share this with your friends and family. I'm just going to use the example of an iPhone, for instance. Let me make the bottom a little bit bigger. You can pause this right now and take uh, out your smartphone. I'll give you the example of an iPhone. If you got an iPhone, open up the camera, point it at this thing. Providing, of course, you're not watching it on your iPhone. Uh, but anyways, if you're watching this on a screen, uh, other than your mobile devices, you point your, your smartphone at this camera and uh, your, there would be a yellow box appearing somewhere on your screen. That'll say, um, you know, YouTube or something like that. And you click it and it's the link to this Linux for Seniors. So if you like what you see on my channel, um, or this video, hit subscribe. None of my videos, none of my videos are less than two minutes. Let's talk about what you came in here for. All right, so I'm gonna to go to the menu. So we have the Zorin appearance. We can also make other changes. We can go and hit settings and talk about appearance. There's a bunch of styles, there's a bunch of icons. You can also add stuff. And both. Now here is where I'm going to advocate that you make screenshots because the combinations between these two are a lot and if you forget and you want to go back to your original theme and you didn't have a screenshot you will be in there clicking between these two for a long time. So let's do this smart. Let's walk over here and type in SC. What I'm looking for is screenshot. I could Add it to my desktop, add it to the panel. I can do both. I'm just going to do the add it to desktop first. Then I'll show you add it to panel later if you're not too keen on how it does that. So I'm going to put that there. The only thing I failed to mention was I did not do this and I apologize. This will only take a second. 
So this is just the Zorin logo, and that's pretty uh, typical of that Neo fetch command, but this is Zorin OS 16.2, the XFC test type. I apologize. Forget about the rest of the stuff. Okay, let's move on. So I made a put a screenshot tool on my desktop, and it's very simple to use. I only use these two. You can also uh, experiment with select region if you like. Anyways, the active window and the entire screen. What is the difference? I'm going to drag this box right here and let you see it. So this is just a tool. It will never take a picture of this tool box. It will take a picture of if it's the entire screen. It makes a picture of this and your wallpaper and whatever icons you have and the panel bar. If you're not familiar with the Zorin interface, this is your panel bar downstairs. So when you are having wallpaper that are really dense, you got photos of your children or pets or some other dense wallpaper, for instance, that has a lot of color, it adds to the file size. So a lot of your entire screen sizes will vary depending on your wallpaper is what I'm getting at. They're normally larger though. If you put on a black wallpaper, for instance, it'll be a smaller file. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is point to this down here for a second because that's normally defaulted. If you don't need this mouse pointer picture on it, then deselect that. Okay, so that's currently grayed out for the entire screen. I don't use this box at all. So I'm going to take the screenshot. Now I get a mini thumbnail. The common action is save and that's what you want and hit OK. So you have some options to send it where? Where are you going to save this at? I'm going to save mine on my desktop and then I'm going to talk about some best practices, or at least my way, of um, you know, doing some, um, how do I put this, um, filing of those screenshots. All right, so I created a screenshot. I'm not done. I'm going to create another one with the active window. Again, it doesn't take a picture of this box, so you can place this anywhere. You can place it right in between there if you like. So it makes a, a thumbnail of that box right here. That is the active window. This is not the active window. I'm going to save it to the same location. And now I have two of these. Now I'm going to minimize this for a second. Let's talk about these screenshots. So you can clearly see everything in here. I got my wallpaper, my appearance box, my icons, my panel bar. Okay, you've got that so far. Let's look at this one. All it is is this tiny little box. That's all really I want. I wanted to know where I started from. Why are screenshots important? Anytime you make system changes, it is advisable to make, um, I'll do another one here. Let's say you were monkeying around with your fonts and your custom dots per inch setting. Wouldn't it be a good idea to have a reference in case you made a mess and want to go back to fix it? I think it would be beneficial beneficial to you. So I'm going to do a screenshot of that one even and save it to the same location. Now I got three of these. I can do other settings. You know, you can go to the other settings in here and uh, let's say you wanted to uh, take a photo of this for instance or a screenshot. And by the way, anytime you alter your resolution and refresh, right, if you have other options and hit apply, and your screen goes black for more than five to 10 seconds, leave it alone. Do not reboot your machine. Allow it to time out and it should go back to the previous. All right, I'm gonna make a screenshot of that just because we want some extra screenshots. We're playing. I'm gonna send it to the same place. So we have four of these. Now I'm gonna close this for a second and reopen this. So we're gonna to go to settings, drag the box over and appearance. And then I'm going to talk about uh, the best practices and how you can move files and stuff like that a little bit later. But I want to bring this up just to let you see the color of these icons. And of course, I could uh, resize these on the fly with my little tip of holding down the control key and using my computer scroll wheel. Okay, you can also do it the old fashioned way. All right, so I just wanted to let you see the color of these icons. So this is my home folder, Mr. Senior. You like that? <laughs> so I just click that. Then I click that. Then I click this. Let's take a look at some of these menus. Let's go change the icon because I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Now that's brown. Take a look at my file manager 
And the, if you're not familiar with this file manager, it's Thunar. You like that logo? It's a little different when you uh, click on their icon themes. You can resize these too. But more importantly, I am just clicking around. How about that one? You like them apples? Okay. Now I'm done playing. I forgot what I originally started with. What combination of these two guys? Oh boy. All right, first of all, that's barely, I, I can't see that, so it's kind of hard. I can try to switch that to a different theme temporarily, but I still don't know what I was. Well, this is where this comes in handy. So let's go fi figure this one out. So I'm gonna first go to style. So we're gonna look for this Zorin blue light. That's that one. What's the other screenshot? That was fonts. Did I not make a screenshot of that? I thought I did. Oh boy, I'm a bad boy. Style, I, I don't think I made a uh, copy of those icons. So now I'm gonna have to take a guess at this. Oh boy. So anyways, now I'm gonna have to uh, try to figure this one out. See the benefits of having the screenshots. So I forgot to take a screenshot of this. Now let's double check all this stuff. That one says fonts. That one's display. That one's the larger version of my style icons, which I don't need anymore because I think this one took, yeah, that one took over. So let's get rid of that one. So basically I messed up. I forgot to make a screenshot of my icon set in here. Okay. So I believe that's actually default there, but uh, so let's do that properly before I, really make a mess of things. So I'm going to double click on that little icon, do active window and save this screenshot this time, right? All right, send it to the desktop. So I got an extra icon there. You see the benefit of doing this? Because sometimes we have a, well, a senior moment. Some of our younger folks also have those moments. You, you don't remember how, what this was set for even uh, two hours from now, or maybe three days from now, unless you've got a great memory. I personally just like to use screenshots so I don't have to remember things like this. So let's talk about, um, now that I put this back, let's talk about what I can do with these things. So let's open up the file manager. So again, this is your file manager, Thunar. So sometimes when you click on different themes, that icon changes, by the way. There'll be one with a hammer logo in here. Anyways, uh, your file manager, Thunar, can do a lot of things for you. So I'm, my username is Mr. Senior. You like that? Anyways, I am going to select a folder I'm going to put these into, or I can create one. But I'm going to stick mine in documents. I'm going to create a folder by right-clicking and creating a folder. I could call it X, but I'm going to call it something more, well, something more descriptive. So screenshots it is and hit enter. Then I'm going to open that. So my path is Mr. Senior Documents Screenshots. So nothing's in here. So there's several ways of doing this, folks, to bring these files into here. I could do a cut and paste. I can do a copy and paste and leave the original. I could also drag it in here one at a time. I could also select and hold the control key and select and select. I could also do this. Again, there's multiple ways of doing things, and I sometimes have different ways of doing stuff. I'm gonna drag a box around those guys and drag them and dump them in here all at once. All right, do I want this full screen? Well, I'm just gonna operate in this mode. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. I'm using my little trick there. You can use it the old fashioned way if you like. So I got some screenshots here. Do you like the labeling? Or do you want uh, some tips on labeling? All right. So if you're okay with the way you got these screenshots, um, let's leave it at that. However, if you are wanting to do this in a different way, so this is called display. So I'm gonna right click on this thing and hit rename. It only highlights the first part of this thing. I'm gonna call it display setting. What's the date today? You can look at your calendar downstairs. So it's February 24th too. 24, 23. I don't really need the time. 
and it saves it with a PNG ending just like the original file rename. So that's one. So we have that icon thing. We have icons and we have that one's fonts and this is the other one. Let's say you had added a bunch of these things and they're blown off the page and you have a scroll bar in here. You may also want to take two screenshots. Then you would probably want to call that part one or two. I'm going to show you an interesting feature that a lot of people may not want to, uh, or want to think about. So I'm going to rename that and I'm going to call that one, uh, what is it, style? Style part one. 2.24, okay, so I'm going to put another dash in there so it doesn't look like a 12. So this is, I uh, forgot the you know, spelling count, or it doesn't, actually it doesn't. So this is a style or appearance, whichever name you want to give it. So I have another one here. Let's say you made two screenshots of this, and the next one is, I just pretend that I made two screenshots because it had a because it had a scroll bar. And this would be part one of your screenshot. And you did another screenshot, which would be part two. Let me show you an interesting trick you can do with this text. Just hit the rename key, but don't rename it. All you do is right click on that blue highlighted line and hit copy, and then cancel that. Walk over to here, select it, right click, and hit rename, and then paste that. And then you can change that number to two, just by clicking in there and then rename. Okay, so that one becomes part one and two. Okay, does that make sense? So what was this actually? This was icon sets. So we're gonna rename that to icons setting. And the day's date is uh, 2-24-23. You, you can use any naming convention that makes sense to you. These are only recommendations. You don't have to use screenshots if you've got a good memory. <laughs> what I'm saying is it's good to have screenshots of anything if you're making system changes. And of course, icon sets and themes or appearance is making system changes. These files are extremely small. 48 KIB, in other words, 49,000 bytes, very small screenshots. So if I use the full size entire screen screenshot, I'll just do one of this one, just to give you the size example and save it to my desktop. That file is a lot larger, isn't it? 1.7 MIB or 1.7 megabytes roughly, MIB format. Very huge compared to these. I'll draw a box around that. It's just my way of selecting and hit delete. So again, don't forget the resize thing. If you want to do it the old fashioned way, then go ahead and uh, you can also use control and hold the key down and go plus, plus, plus. Uh, but I think it, it, you'll probably find that if you hold down your control key on your keyboard and use your computer mouse to scroll up and down, it comes in handy, especially when you're looking at thumbnails on pictures. Once you get them to the right size, just release the control key and they'll stay in this size. I don't have a lot of photos to scroll through. So if I bring this up, actually, it'll give me a bigger scroll bar. Now you can see what I'm talking about. Holding down the control key, I'll go and resize those again. Now I don't have a scroll bar. Now I do. These are massive now. And don't forget, you, bring, you brought in your um, picture of your, your kids your friends, your pets, your wallpaper. You can always set these as wallpaper. All right, with that note, I will say thank you for watching, folks, and hopefully you subscribed for Linux for Seniors. And uh, basically, on that note, thank you for watching.